Today we are starting a new quilt along on this beautiful quilt by Joan Breeze. Orange red thread because there is this wonderful color. It was kind of um, Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are starting a new quilt along on this beautiful quilt by Joan Breeze. And let's head down to the quilt and I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing to it. Obviously this is going to be something that she wanted custom on. Um, all of these wonderful um, arc shapes, crescents, are all hand applique to each of these. And what you see here is completely throughout the whole quilt. So there is nothing that changes through the quilt. Now, um, obviously what I'm gonna do is some sort of a border treatment up here. Um, I'm gonna ditch between the body and border, as you will see. And then what I think I'm gonna do, just to take it up a notch, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a border within a border here. So, and then whatever design I'm going to put in, I'm going to put it on the inside of that. And then, of course, it will be ditched here. And then I'm going to come down. Now, I am not going to do a linear design here, so nothing with straight lines. I think I'm going to do um, one of my vine designs. Um, and then what I'm going to do down here in this little border is, of course, this will be ditched. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to ditch this. And then I think, again, I'm going to repeat that same thing. Uh, I'm going to create a smaller border in, though I think I'm going to create a less, um, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a, I might do half an inch up on the red, but down here I think I might do a quarter inch down, quarter inch up after I ditch here. And then what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and do some piano keys, I think, to set off and separate the... Um, the fancier design that I do up here, uh, and then this. And then, of course, in these crescents, I think, <laughs> again, I may change my mind when I get down there, I'm obviously going to go ahead and I'm going to ditch around these guys right here. Um, now, what I might do, just to stabilize these since they are hand appliqued, um, and because there's hundreds of these on here, um, I don't know how... Um, she may have gotten tired through part of the process. I don't know that. They look amazing, but we will see. And what I might do is use a neutral thread and do a straight line through each one of them. That way that's going to stabilize that and add some integrity to this quilt throughout the years. Um, once I ditch around all of these, what I might actually do is to come in and do a curved echo to give myself a curved square through here, and then I will figure out what type of design I'm gonna do in here. I'm thinking probably just to fill, just to give some positive and negative space because we do have a double batten here. We have an 80-20. We also have a um, poly down um, batting in here. Um, so that's gonna give it some nice puff and gonna give it a nice faux trapunto look. Um, and then, so obviously, that's how I'm going to work through this whole quilt since it's all the same, uh, unless I change my mind, and we shall see. So now, the, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you, um, and we've already pre-filmed me basting the edge. We have some fullness in the border. Um, I also, as you can see, if we can zero in a little bit here, Rich, can we zero into some of these white spots? What I did was I had to go in with some spray starch because you can see we've got just a little bit of fullness and I put some spray starch to wet that down but I um, did my best to make sure that um, this part of the red and this part, the first part of the white did not touch. That way there wouldn't be any bleed, God willing. Um, 
unless this one is getting pretty close because I doused it pretty hard. There was a little bit of extra fullness here and here. So uh, we're going to wait about 15 minutes for that to dry. But let's go look at um, the actual beginning where I am basting the quilt and then I talk about what I did here. This is so much flatter than it was, as you will see in just a moment. Um, and this part is even flattening out. So it's going to be nice and flat to work its way through. Okay, so let's head over to that section and join me as we do our next quilt along. So we've got some fullness here in the border. And again, we've got white here, we've got red up here. So I'm simply going to keep that up high just to take in some of the fullness along the edge. And as long as I mask it a bit, that red won't bleed into this lower white part. So we're going to wait. Line that up. Give that about 10 or 15 minutes and that'll be nice and flat for us. And I'm going to get rid of some of these puckers over here. And it didn't really show itself until I started basting the edge. And I'm going to do a little bit of the sides as well, just to kind of work that fullness up. Now, again, we are wanting to work that fullness up into each roll so we don't end up with five or ten inches of fullness down at the bottom. Again, I'm simply using the cardstock to kind of mask it from the white. Okay, let's give that about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, so now it has shrunk up a little bit, so I've got a lot less fullness. It's still not completely dry, but it's good enough to get it basted. Now I am basting this at five stitches per inch because I don't want a lot of stitches because obviously, especially with a full border, much less with a regular border, um, more stitches per inch is going to cause a lot more fullness. Uh, less stitches per, per inch is going to relax the, the border so that you can work in the fullness a lot easier. And then when it dries completely, before I actually start the border treatment, it'll work out all of the, um, any of the distortion. It'll be nice and flat. And now, one of the rare times I've got this all in place, so I don't have to worry about it too much, I'm going to actually um, work my way down the side rather than from the bottom of the throat space up. And I'm just, of course, putting that stitch, as you well know, you've seen me do it a ton of times within an eighth of an inch of the edge of the quilt. Okay, 
That's good. Now we'll let that dry completely and then we'll get on to ditching between the body and border and the border design itself. So now that everything's basted down, the starch has almost completely dried and it's taken in a lot of fullness. There was still just a little bit of fullness here that you saw me working with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do my ditch work starting from here because the worst part of the fullness was on this side. So if I go ahead and ditch this and then I'll go back to the beginning and ditch around rather than moving any fullness down and around. I've got it set for 11 stitches per inch. So I don't want tight stitches since we have some fullness in the border. And when I have a full border, then I will actually take it down to 10 or 11 stitches for the ditch work. So I get less puckering from the fullness. And because this side is pretty stable, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down the side. Normally, I would work from the belly bar up when I'm doing my ditch work. But this one, because I've used the spray starch on the side, will be pretty stable. Okay, and now I will do my... Tie off. I'm going to do that a few times. There we go. Pull away. Come towards. Pull up my bobbin. Pull it taut. Pop that knot. Snip that thread. And now I don't have to worry about tails above or below for my new folks out there. So now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start over on this side and I'm going to work my way over to where I started. Now I am using a um, kind of a rusty orange red thread because there is this wonderful color. It was kind of, because um, I don't talk about this a lot, and I think I'm going to make sure that I start talking about it. Um, this is going to blend in really nice. Um, I thought about using the reddish, that cardinal red, but that blended in so much you, could, you wouldn't really be able to see anything I did in there, aside from the texture. But this nice color right here is a nice contrast. Plus, you can see little bites of that color are in there. And I thought about the lavenderish purple as well uh, for, um, I, can't, I think this is the grunge fabric, um, but I thought, no, that'll just be a little bit too much. I find that there's a little bit more orange and reds within the body of the quilt, so that's why I'm using this. I try to air if I'm airing. This is a um, uh, lighter end custom. So I am airing towards the colored fabric, of course. So that that way, if I do go out of the ditch, it'll be in the colored fabrics side. And since this is the color thread that I'm going to be using in the border itself, 
this I decided this was the color I would actually do the ditch work in. I do a lot of quilts for Joan, usually edge to edge. So it was nice to find a nice quilt that I wanted to do something a little more custom for her. I'm not going to take it into high show custom, but I am going to take it just so she can see some texture. Okay, I'll do my tie-off stitches. Needle up, pull away, grab, back, lower, up, pop my knot, and snip. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to use a ruler. I'm going to go a half inch up into this border, and then I'm going to come down and go three quarters of an inch down because, again, um, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm going to go a half inch up and then I'm going to average how much down I'm going to go, but I'm going to use the line that I sew in first here so that I get a nice even line here so that when I trim the quilt, it will uh, visually look more square. So I'm going to use a ruler. We're going to go up a half of an inch. I'm going to mark, whoops, chalk overboard. That guy out. I think I had it a little too long. When that happens and you break that a lot, what happens is I extended it too long and I had it out there and that's gonna make it break. So you wanna make sure to take it back to about there. Okay. Okay, and then we'll come down the sides, half of an inch, inner edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. I just want to check over here. So this border is five inches. So um, knowing that, I'm just going to check it to see if it's pretty consistent. And it is pretty consistent. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take it up to four inches. So I'm going to come back to four inches and then that'll leave enough room for binding and a little bit of negative space between the binding and the, um, the actual uh, quilt border. So let me go over here to the side. Okay, and I'm going to take my, I know that this is a, a five inch wide ruler, so I'm going to take my four inches right down to the seam, and then I'll do my mark. And again, I want to make sure I measured this line from um, the seam of the quilt itself. So this line up here, I also want to make sure to use that same, rather than measuring down and assuming that her border is completely perfect throughout. So let's go to four inches. To there, get that out of the way with the extended base. Let me lower that needle. Okay. And again, with some borders, you don't have to be um, perfect if the, um, if the border happens to be just a smidge off. The eye will automatically correct most of the inconsistencies it sees. And I say that a lot, and you need to know that that is 
the way it goes and come on chalk that starch is making it resist the chalk a little bit there we go okay needle up we get that machine out of the way we just moved our studio last week so this studio came downstairs we wanted a downstairs spot so that us and our students didn't have to go up the stairs every time we go from drawing to machine and I don't want to go upstairs all the time so let me see Iris did not like the stairs either she was like all right already this is not a good substitute for my walk, she says. Okay. All right. So we're resettling in, and I'm trying to get caught up on all of my custom quilts that I'm behind on, and I am behind on a plenty of them. Plenty, plenty. We wanted to make sure to get all of our classes done over the past few months that people had been waiting and had missed out on during the COVID issue. And that kind of got me behind. Okay. And I'm too old to pull overnighters anymore. Otherwise, I used to just come down to the studio and work all night, but can't do that anymore. See, I make myself sound horribly old. All right, there we go. So we've got both of those lines in. I'm going to darken this one just a little bit. There we go. Now I've got my line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, um, quilt those two lines all the way around. That's going to give me a nice channel. Um, and I want to measure what that actually is so it's about three and a half inches which would make it about one and three quarter inches if i split that which i um, might be doing depending on what design i choose to use i've got a few different ideas of what i'm going to do in here but i'm not quite quite sure i'll know once we get there